What are you doing? That's not part of the mission. I thought I was supposed to destroy Metal Gear. No, Snake. The bipedal nuclear walking tank Metal Gear, not the game cartridge. Metal Gear is a stealth-based adventure, putting you in control of Solid Snake, a super spy tasked with eliminating a terrorist cell and preventing all-out nuclear war. Metal Gear isn't the first stealth game. That honor belongs to a Sega game called 005. But Sega beating Konami to the punch six years in advance means very little, because I don't think anyone is playing 005 Solid 5 The Phantom Game, are they? Let's take a trip back in time to the genesis of Metal Gear, the ancient year of 1987. This is a time before Konami enjoyed ostracizing their audience, when they still made video games, not glorified slot machines. An era when you honored creative directors, not buried them for making games that fans want to play. Hideo Kojima's name should be familiar to anyone who has played a Metal Gear game, even if the only one is Metal Gear Solid 5, cause his name is in the credits before and after every level! When Kojima was first working on Metal Gear, he wanted to make a modern military action game. Unfortunately, due to the hardware limitations on the MSX, Kojima felt that the lack of on-screen enemies and projectiles would impede on the combat and gameplay. However, being a huge fan of film, Kojima drew inspiration from The Great Escape and Escape from New York, and had the gameplay refocused on avoiding detection and rescuing captured allies. Whoa! Hold on a second! MSX? What the heck is that? Well, back in the Paleolithic era of 1983, Japan didn't just have the Nintendo Famicom, it also had a Microsoft-based plug-and-play computer called the MSX. While it wasn't popular in North America, the MSX-based machines sold well in Asia, South America, and some European countries. But you mentioned Konami. My Metal Gear's on the NES, and it was made by a company called Ultra. Well, dear viewers, when Nintendo was number one, Nintendo of America had an insanely strict license rule that prevented third-party publishers from publishing more than five games in a year on the Nintendo Entertainment System. This was only Nintendo of America, mind you, but this led to gaming companies creating subsidiary companies in order to release more games each year. Examples of these companies are the notorious Tengen for Atari and Ultra for Konami. So on behalf of Konami, Ultra published a very different version of Metal Gear. The main reason it was different was the additional hardware limitations from porting the game from the MSX to the NES. That said, Hideo Kojima had no input on the NES version of Metal Gear, and complained about the many changes that were made to the game. In an interview conducted by Stephen Kent, Kojima stated, I really don't like saying this, but it really wasn't up to my standards. The care I put into the original wasn't there. It was a more difficult game, 
In the beginning, when you go from the entrance into the fortress, for example, there are dogs there. In the Famicom version, the dogs just came after you and you get killed. It was too difficult to get into the fortress. The fun stealth element was not there, and the actual Metal Gear, the robot, doesn't appear in the game. So the intro in your NES Metal Gear was never in the original game. But enough history, let's kick this pig! So here we are, jumping out of the plane, into the mission zone. Shit, where'd those other three guys go? Are they okay? Yeah, Big B! I don't think they made it! Oh, you know, you don't care. Well, okay. Right off the bat, the dialogue is a little mistranslated. You feel asleep? But are you actually asleep? Because you don't got those little Z's above your head anymore. Oh shit, you're awake! You see, the trick here is dogs can't see you if you don't move. Shit! Piss! Damn it! So the trick to this area is you just punch the shit out of these dogs. We give this game the AAA award. Does PETA know about this game? Because they love to hate video games. Really, Snake? Beating animals? Why not just shoot them and put them out of their misery? So eventually you find a truck that conveniently starts when you hop in the back. But a bing bada boom takes you to the enemy compound. Piece of cake. The core of the game is sort of a fetch quest puzzle game. Each new area presents you with a new challenge, be it electric floors or gas-filled corridors that kill you if you don't have a gas mask. Thanks, Big B. Thanks. Another aspect of the game is rank. Your rank is represented by a certain amount of stars at the bottom of the screen. To increase your rank, you must free prisoners. The higher your rank, the more health you can have and the more ammo you can carry. Just be careful not to shoot any prisoners, or you'll lose those precious ranks. Snake, Fulton devices are obsolete. We haven't used them in nine years. So, we got the gist of how it plays, but Metal Gear is a series that's known for its story. So, what's the story? The main themes of the game remain the same as its MSX counterpart. Infiltrate Outer Haven, rescue Grey Fox, and seek and destroy the Metal Gear. However, according to the instruction manual, there is a few minor changes to the story, and I quote, Vermin Katafi, terrorist at large. Colonel Vermin Katafi, a once tranquil shepherd boy who grew up on the remote banks of the Sam Sam River in Outer Mongolia with his tw- <laughs> Are we serious? 27? Whew! 27 sisters turned to terrorism at an early age. If I had 27 sisters, I'd turn to terrorism. I have one sister and I want to turn to terrorism. Now, after years of pillaging innocent people, he has taken control of Outer Haven, a small nation on the outskirts of South Africa. Here he is sole tyrant and radical dictator. He rules with bullets and bombs, and in only a few months, he has outlawed democracy and turned harmless villagers into mercenaries for global terrorist network. But his biggest threat is yet to come. For as an obsessed madman, he has created the ultimate super weapon. It's Katafi's greatest dream and world's most hideous nightmare. It's called Metal Gear. And it must be destroyed before the crazed colonel unleashes his violence across the globe. I'm just gonna stop there. But I would love to know how high the author of this little piece of literature was when he wrote this. Vermin Katafi? He isn't even mentioned throughout the entire game. Other than the similar theme of destroying Metal Gear, this story has nothing to do with the game. Seriously? <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> what the hell? Within the game, on the other hand, the story is pretty simple. You play Solid Snake, 
you're a member of Foxhound, and you must infiltrate the enemy fortress and destroy Metal Gear. Along the way, you've free captured agents, and some of them give you vital information to beat the game. There are a few tropes that are continued throughout the series. For example, the scientist that is building Metal Gear against his will, the unsuspecting villain that is either your friend or family member, or both, and rescuing key individuals in order to progress. Oh, and there's the cardboard box. The bosses are one of my favorite features in the series. Their stylized comic book qualities are always enjoyable. I still remember the first time with Psycho Mantis. The charm didn't start with Metal Gear Solid. For Metal Gear has some pretty ridiculous bosses of its own. Certain bosses like the Shotgunner and the Machine Gun Kid and a couple of cyborgs called Arnold make the villains feel like characters out of 70s and 80s action movies. The fights can be insanely hard if you don't know the enemy's weakness or the tricks to beating them, like hiding behind crates and launching four missiles at the Shotgunner. The game does a lot for all its limitations, and knowing that this game is only a mere shadow of the original Metal Gear on MSX, I think it does quite well. That said, the translation problem is brutal. Several times Big Boss tells you to call Snyder for info, but he never gives you the radio frequency. It's not a classic check the back of the box trick either. It's just not in the game. Or if it is, I've never found it until he calls me in the end game. From what I have gathered, they only had three months to redesign the game for the NES, and many transceiver dialogues were lost, or misplaced throughout the game. The game is actually quite short, and if you know the correct order to pick up items and open doors, the game is completable in under an hour. Most of the game is a battle of attrition. Eventually you'll find the right room, item, or tool to overcome the next obstacle. Now on to some of the finer points of the game. Enemies won't see you if you hide in your cardboard box, provided you are immobile. In a Legend of Zelda way, you can find secret doors with the iron glove by listening to the sound that punching walls makes. If there's a hidden door nearby, the sound changes. Unlike the MSX version, there isn't a lasting layer to the alert mode, so if you mess up, and are seen by the enemies, simply changing screens will end the alert. This makes being seen or caught by lasers and cameras almost unimportant, and scouting tools like the binoculars redundant. There is a really cool moment after you are caught by the enemy. Once you recover your gear, you might notice that there is a transmitter in your equipment page. Until you manually remove this, you will always alert the enemies once you enter the screen. Back in my day, we had to walk out of the room to get more rations. None of these transceiver exploits. And it got enough praise to get a sequel. While some don't consider this little gem canon with the Metal Gear storyline, it actually inspired Kojima to make his own sequel, which led to one of the most successful stealth-based game series of all time. What is this? I don't know what that is. Get that out of here. I'm talking about Metal Gear Solid. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, please subscribe, and most importantly, please leave a comment because your comments help me improve. And uh, speaking of improve, I want to thank some people that made this video so much better than when I first started. Wiley Dorman and Jordan Kemp. Jordan Kemp played our guard. He was very willing to do whatever I asked of him, including stand on camera and get choked out by me as I dragged him off screen. And Wiley Dorman, who brought half the props, he brought the MSX version of the game, which allowed me to see the differences between the NES version and the MSX version firsthand. And uh, he even wrote half the jokes. So if you're laughing at me, you're really laughing at Wiley. He loves Metal Gear, and he was just, uh, it was a pleasure working with him. He just helped make this video so much better. Thank you both for being part of the film. And I also want to thank Rohan Van Rensburg. He's been doing all of our original musics. He does the intro to our all of our videos, as well as the personalized intro for my Kraken classics. He's doing a bunch of scores for us to put in the backgrounds of our videos, and they are fantastic, and I can't wait to use them. 
he uh, he has his own channel. You should like and subscribe to him. He's gonna put up a lot more stuff, a lot more of his original songs. It's really quite amazing having him as uh, a part of our team. So thank you so much, Rohan. Thank you, Wiley. Thank you, Jordan.